back now fit into the crest rail and the rear apron. It's time for us to start working on our arms. I took the liberty of milling up this piece of mahogany that we had marked on our larger board earlier. I took it to the bandsaw, uh, ripped it for length, and then cross cut it. And then went over to the jointer and thickness planed it to its correct thickness. Now the only really dimension that matters here is the thickness. This is an inch and a half thick, which is the same thickness we cut our template to when we were making our templates. As far as the width and the length, what matters here is that lengthwise your top view as well as your side view uh, template fits to lengthwise to it and if you're either going to do this from one board or from two or I decided to do this from one board and I have um, enough material here to pull two arms out of this one board. You may have done it with uh, two pieces, either way is fine. Okay, I'm over here at the bench and what I want to walk you through is um, grain direction and selection of where to put your arms on this piece. I have my arm template here and I took the liberty of making a couple of new marks on it. Um, in this direction here, as you face the chair with diagonal at, at this point, this would be the left arm. And obviously, then the other side would be the right as it points, diagonal points inward. What I want here is to pull up two parts from this board that both have this grain direction that are complementary to each other. Let me show you what I mean by that. As you can see, I've already marked out one of my arms by just taking my permanent marker and drawing the, with the template on top of the piece. I've also drawn some lines here, and these lines show you the direction of the grain and the board. So as you look towards this piece, the grain is now going um, up to the right. And that's great for my left arm, but if I flip my template over for my right arm, that's not what I want. For the right arm, I want the grain to go in the opposite direction. In order to remedy this, what we need to do is release our left arm out of this board. And I flipped the board around 180 degrees. So now we're looking at what used to be the back. And here you can see I marked out the grain direction as well for the end grain. And you can see now that this direction of the grain that's running up and to the right, and this direction is going up and to the left, you know, it's nice. They complement each other. What I want to do is pull out, pull the right arm so that the grain direction is going towards the center, just like it is in the left arm. Now, if you have grain that's more towards a uh, quarter saw in the back for both arms, that's great too. That's perfect. Um, I just happen to have grain direction that's more in a 45 degree angle than it is towards a 90 degree angle. Before coming over here at the bandsaw, I rough cut both my right and left arm. Here I have a spiral bit with um, a bearing on top, actually two bearings, and we're going to use this to pattern route our arms. I have the right arm here and the template is attached to it with some double stick tape. I've already preset the height of the router bit so that the bearing guide will be running along the template and we'll be cutting uh, just off the top of our arm. And now we're going to make the cut for the angle for the front of the arms. I had used my template to set up the angle for my miter gauge here. What you're looking to do right now is just cut off right where that line is. So for me, I use black permanent marker and I'm looking to just remove that line. No material on the other side of it, just the line. Now that we've created the taper on our arms from the front to the back, what we want to do next is create the shape of the arm and the taper from the top to the bottom and we're leaving material here. We're going to router template this, but before we router template it, I want to show you which side of the arm the router template needs to go on and why. When I was investigating how to build this chair and I was looking at pictures, 
it took me a while to find the right picture that explained or showed which direction the indent for the arm would be for the top before the, the taper began back here. And the way that direction is, is the we round over here on the right all the way across to the left from uh, pointing towards the front of the chair. So what that does for us is it makes us have to put our template and attach it to the outside of each leg when we do our pattern routing. I took my arm and I double stick taped it. And then over the bandsaw, I cut away the waist from both the top and the bottom. The waist cut away, here at the router table, what we need to do now is pattern route the arm. Unfortunately, I don't have a bottom bearing bit like that white side spiral top bearing bit. They do have a bottom bearing, I just don't own it. So for us, or at least for me, uh, I'm going to have to do this in a two-stage pass. So my first pass is going to be with this smaller bottom bearing pattern template bit. So I'll take one pass with it on both sides. And once I finish with that one pass on both sides, I'll come with this bit, which has both a top and a bottom, but I'll be able to raise it enough that I can get the cutter head into the section where I can get cutting in the section I'm going to need to for um, the arm. I'll raise it high enough that the material I'm removing won't be any higher than the total length of the cutter heads here. I just finished pattern routing my arms and they look great. Um, everything came out really well. I cleaned them up on the spindle sander and smoothed out wherever the burn marks were and the arms look really great. This is my left arm. I got my right arm here on the chair right now. Let's take a look at that. I have a spacer here and it's eight and a half inches tall. So what the spacer is going to help us do is register the back of the arm into the leg. The um, seat, or the top of the rails that is, those are 17 inches tall. And if we take 7 inches plus the 8.5 we have here, we get the total height for our legs. And that's why the spacer is 8.5 inches tall. I've also made it a little bit long to help provide support over the length of the arm. Because there's one last thing I want to do before I take the arm off and I cut it for length and try it and then mark out the position of the arm and the leg and that is I want to take a square and roughly find out where I position this not necessarily across the width here because I've tried to center this but more so um, the depth of the arm as far as how much it's pushing out from the leg. So I'm going to take my square 3 eighths of an inch so I'm 3 eighths of an inch proud of the front of the leg. So what I'm going to do is take my other arm and just mark out really lightly 3 eighths of an inch. A little arrow pushing backwards. And I just did that so I don't forget later on, let's say you come back to this in a day or so, you don't want to lose what this uh, dimension is or measurement. So I'm going to set that aside. I just want to take a real quick look at the positioning of the arm on top of the front leg right now. The arm has this little um, indent here and then it continues on. Well right here we're going to be extending this up as we do some carving later on. But I want to make sure that this indent here is far enough back so that on the other side the inside indent here is pushed back about 3 16ths of an inch from 
where the leg meets the arm. So we want to push back 3 16 of an inch from there. So we want to go flat and then start about 3 16 of an inch back. We will gain some extra room here when we taper the leg all around as it comes up to enter into the arm. Right now I have the arm roughly placed where I want it to be and I'm just going to take a pencil and I'm going to make a tick mark here roughly where I want the arm to enter into the leg. And now with that tick mark made, I'm just roughly drawing the shape of the leg, uh, taking a straight on viewpoint so I know where the edge of the leg is and where I want the arm to roughly enter inside the leg. Okay, with this line drawn here representing roughly where the shape of the leg is, now what we can do is measure back the distance we're going to drill into the leg or mortise in too. Um, and we're going to mortise in about a little bit over a half an inch. I'm probably going to try for 0.7 inches and I'm going to want to move this line back a little bit more than a half an inch and that'll give me some room to play with the depth of where I want the arm to be. I'm just going to take this opportunity to come back this half an inch here, make a mark. And now I know where I need to cut my arm for length. At the bandsaw, I cut the arm to length. And now it's time to position the arm to make our marks on our leg. So what we want to do is we want to center the arm both in the front as well as in the back of the leg. So we have a nice center line as we're looking down the center of the arm all the way to the center of the leg. And then from there we'll take our marking knife and we'll mark the outside of the arm on the leg. With the arm nice and secure, I'm just going to take the marking knife. And make a cut all around. I have my left leg on the bench. It's clamped down. It has the rear cut off behind it, supporting it right now. The first thing I did was I came in with my pencil and I darkened the lines I made with my knife on the leg. And I also drew myself a little arrow to remind myself what direction the arm was coming into the leg and that's from 12 degrees from the outside in. You'll see I have my bevel gauge here set up at 12 degrees as well, and I'm going to use that as a guide to help me drill into the leg. So with my drill here, I have a piece of tape set at just a little bit more than th uh, the total depth will need to be, so it's just under 3 quarters of an inch. Okay, I'm going to take my drill, I'm going to find roughly where center is. And the first thing I'm going to do is drill down just a little bit. Now that I have the bit catching some wood, I can now angle it and sight down the bevel gauge at 12 degrees. With a nice chunk of material hogged out with the drill, I now have a place I can start. I have some chisels here, um, a mallet, and I still have my bevel gauge set up at 12 degrees. And I'm going to use it to sight down the gauge to match the angle on my chisel as I start to remove waste. I'm going to use some smaller chisels because I don't want to remove too much material at a time. I just want to slowly work back to my lines. I'm 
I just want to show you where I am so far. I've come in and with my chisel I had to, I defined the outside of the wall where the knife lines were so that in case I start getting close I don't want to blow out any wood there. And you can see that my chisel when it goes in it comes in at an angle and I've been trying to work against the same angle on the bevel gauge, sighting down the chisel, trying to match it to the gauge as I'm working down and removing material for both walls. So this is this would be close to vertical and this is around my 12 degree. So I'm just just like chopping a square mortar uh, that's not angled, I'm coming through and just removing material ever so slightly all around until I get close to those lines. What you can see right now is I removed some material from right here and when I did it I took the, the larger chisel and I removed the material in front of where the angled wall would be. Now I'm coming back with my smaller chisel and I'm just going to walk back on that line and as I walk back on it I can start removing material back to where the, the wall currently is and then come down and remove the rest of the material from that angle. So now I've worked this top part and start working connecting this wall over here on the outside of the arm. Bring my bevel gauge up. Use it to sight down. I'm right on that line. Let's go for it. Check from the side. I think my angle is really good. Yeah. And my angle may be just a little bit steeper, more inward than matching, and that's okay. We're, once again, we're just trying to get the arm set in here. The, this mortise and tenon joint doesn't actually support the arm, that's what the panel does. We're just trying to nest the arm inside the leg. Sorry, I got in the way. I'm just going to walk with my chisel the lines of the mortise wall back until they connect in that corner. I'm looking to create a nice clean corner there, but not and not take away too much material. Just do it slowly so that you get a nice corner. <sighs> now for the moment of truth. After slowly working back to my lines, I have my arm here. And we're just going to see if we fit into the mortise. All right. We're good. Let me just take a whack at it. Yeah, that's nice. It's very nice. I'm gonna pull it out. Got a little tightness on the top and the sides. That's really good. Um, you can see I'm a little. It's a little bit of shine there. 
I have just a little bit on the bottom as well. And uh, we'll work it into the edges too. There's a little bit right here, just above the black line. So what I want to do now at this point is get the leg back in the chair and start trying to fit this arm. So a couple of things I want you guys to take away from this is number one, um, it's not horribly difficult to cut a tenon, I'm sorry, cut a mortise at an angle. We use our bevel gauge to help us and just take it slow. I didn't try to overwork or move too fast. I just slowly move back to my walls using my chisels and taking small amounts of wood every time instead of trying to overwork it and blowing something out or screwing up my leg I was willing to go very slow because I don't want to have to honestly make a whole nother leg. Yeah, right there. Let me walk you through what I just did. Basically, I got really lucky and I cut a really nice mortise. Um, it's the right width, it's the right depth, really good angles. Um, my square here has the same distance between the edge here and the front of the leg as on my right leg. So what I'm using here is I'm just taking the square against my arm with the arm in the center and I was just uh, using the dead blow hammer to set the, the arm into the leg. And we got a really good fit. Really good fit. I, I'm quite happy with this. So with this here, I'm going to clamp this up. I use these leather pads all over for my clamping because it prevents the oils from the pads and the clamps to transfer from the pad, which is plastic petroleum, to our wood. And that's the last thing I want to do. I hate having to clean that stuff up. So it's just easier to prevent it from the beginning. So a little bit of pressure. Try to get this centered. Check my depth. I need to go back just a little bit. Just a little bit more. Before I try to clamp it up, I was right there. Right now I'm off by maybe about a 32nd of an inch or so. And I know I have that in it. Because I already set it um, without the clamp. So When I'm hitting here, I'm supporting the back of the leg too. I'm trying to make sure it doesn't push back um, an angle. So let's see. a little bit more. Oh yeah, there we go. Awesome. Let's take a look at the, the joint. Here's what the inside looks like. Here's what the outside looks like. Here's what the top of the joint looks like. You have your arms now set and it's time to move on to the panels that support the arms and provide a nice aesthetic uh, design element to the chair as well. Mm -hmm.